I smudged with a new kind of sage today. It's called black sage. If you'd like to take some of that with you, I bought like a four pack. Where'd you get it online? <clears throat> I think I got it <laughs> at like Spencer's oh. or something. Somewhere in the mall. Yeah. What if the house is actually insulated great? There's just a shit ton of spirits. <laughs> All just emanating. So it's just cold spots yeah. everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> It'll be nice in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. All of you podcast. Well, at least it was a Patron. That's true. Or whatever else it was I drank that night. We should probably start this podcast, huh? Oh, I thought we already had. Oh. It's Oddity Files. The, the podcast. podcast. I'm Kitsy Duncan. And I'm Clayton Abbott. And this time next week, we are literally going to be doing a live show. We literally will have just finished it. Yeah. At t- Holy shit. I'm still trying to find the perfect story. <laughs> I have mine. Do you? Mm-hmm. I'm so jealous. Okay. I'm so excited to do it. I'm I'm nervous. I'm I'm Are you? Here's anytime I do anything in front of people and this is, you know, the 70s kid in me though. Did you ever watch Brady Bunch? Yes. So the one episode, Cindy Brady's so excited she's going to be on this game show. She has her hair up and all the little curls. And the second the light turns on on the camera to film her, she fucking freezes. And I'm so worried every time I do anything in front of people. You're just going to forget. You're going to like, are you going to have your laptop? Uh, Maybe I should do paper, like print stuff out. Oh, I was thinking an iPad, but that would work. An iPad might work. Do notes? Can you put your notes on your iPad? Yeah. Oh, okay. I really only use my iPad to play Bejeweled and watch movies. <laughs> your iPad's going to die in the middle of it, and so you're just going to have to like speak off of memory. Oh, that. Well. Can you imagine? <laughs> if you just like look over at me in sheer fear, I'll know what happened. With that Cindy Brady look <laughs> on my face without the curly hair. Uh, no, I'm super exci- excited. And those of you that are just listening, it's next Friday, March 15th from 6 to 7 p.m. at Horror Hound Weekend. We are doing our very first live podcast in yes. Cincinnati. I am so stoked. It is Cincinnati, right? Yes, Kind of Cincinnati. had a look on your face like, I really screwed that up. No, it was <laughs> funny because I was just reading something because, so Horror Hound does two or three shows a year, most of the time two, one in Indianapolis and one in Cincinnati. And one of the the people like behind it recently shared that they're like, we cannot like post anything about the Indianapolis show until after the Cincinnati show has happened because immediately people freak out like, uh, did this get moved? Or like, <laughs> it's like, no, 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 no. Oh, so we got to meet some really cool pe- people this weekend. We did. So this weekend was crazy spontaneous, but that's our life. Yes. The day job we're talking about. Yes. We work for a photo op company. Hopefully we have new listeners that don't know much about us. Um, we get to take pictures of celebrities and we got to meet Sir Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger this weekend. It was great. It was cool. It, it was, was very cool. He's a lot shorter than I thought he was going to be. He is pretty short. And then Thor like came in after him, who's another giant. Well, he plays the mountain the on, mountain Game, on of Game of Thrones. And he's freaking ginormous. He was massive. Absolutely massive. I shook his hand and I think... It was. It felt like two hands were holding my one hand, but it was just his. It was crazy. We got to meet. I got to meet Kai Green, who's actually a fan of the paranormal. He said he's going to check out the show. Oh, that's awesome! I didn't know that you didn't. Know I that. loved him to pieces. He is. He was super sweet. A hyper rooster. Love him to death. Yeah. He was. He's actually from Stranger Things. Um, and uh, like a award winning strongman. Oh, like, they, all the people we're talking about are. Award-winning bodybuilders. Yeah, because we were at the Arnold. Yeah, the Arnold Fitness or Arnold Sports Festival. I've only known it called the Arnold. Yeah. So right, well, because <laughs> that's literally what it is. It's been around for name. years, um, and the attendance at the at this event, I cannot <laughs> put into words. In. It was, it was insane. It was stress-inducing for me to look at all these people. Thank God we were kind of off. On a, another floor where I could, right. from a distance, look down at them, as I should in my queen in my. I think I had my tear on at one point. So, um, <laughs> yeah, but it was great. It was a, uh, 
it was different and it's always nice doing shows that you can drive home and be home in like three hours afterwards except for the snow i wasn't too happy about this oh tell me about it when is it gonna be spring i don't know to all of you listening somewhere warm i hate you right now so jealous why do we choose to live here i family it's all the family's fault oh speaking of the cold I have a follow-up from literally last week's episode. Oh. So, do you remember what I did last week? Putting you on the spot? I do. What? Um. <laughs> this isn't fair. The Minnesota y- Ice Yes, Man. yes. <laughs> Damn it. It wasn't fair. <laughs> um. He's found. What? Remember how I said, like, yeah. the guy, like, just got rid of him? It It's missing? Yeah. No, it's found. Where did you hear this? So I found it after some digging because, I mean, this all happened so long ago. I'm like, there's no way this massive thing just disappeared. Yeah. So this guy, Steve Busty, owner. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Steve, if you're listening. 14-year-old boy. <clears throat> He's the owner of the Museum of the Weird Ooh, where's in Austin, this? Texas. I know of that place. Not been, but I want to. It's there. Really? Yes. He bought it on eBay. Get the fuck out of I town. Swear. You can get anything on eBay. I swear. Um, I wish it said how much how, it was. Did he fro- defrost it? Yes. And? It's fake. Oh. Sorry. We kind of knew it, though. I had a strong feeling, I, I should know. say. But yeah, it's it's fake. Um, I'm trying to find... I should have pulled this up beforehand, but yeah, no. it's... I'm I'm bummed, but the poor thing's relieved fake. at the same time. Cause but after- can you imagine those two, like scientists that devoted all this time and effort, and they got the Smithsonian involved? And- can you imagine if you can find one of those books now? I bet <clears throat> it's worth a mint. Oh, you can buy them online still. Oh, st- <laughs> swear. So they didn't stop publishing it. I don't think so. Oh uh, well, you know, you gotta do what uh, you gotta do. But next time we find ourselves in Texas, yeah. We should go and I take sure. a selfie with him. <laughs> you know, I, I you didn't show me pictures during the actual right. storytelling of it. And so I, I went and looked it up the next day. And it kind of looks like somebody from the Planet of the Apes. Yep. That is so true. Yeah. Not really Sasquatch material. So, But they think that <laughs> this thing. Remember, I was like, how the hell does he get this giant block of ice? Right. Uh, they think that this. Carney would like thaw the thing out and then refreeze and then refreeze it at the next. Can you stop. imagine the freezer burn on this thing? <laughs> but I'm like, actually, that is a genius plan. Yeah, totally. because how do people know that they didn't bring in? Yeah, but you know, it's probably like in just a slightly different position than it was the first time. Probably because <laughs> the picture I saw it had like its arm up right. over its head, looking like Rose and Titanic. Yeah, exactly my thoughts. <laughs> Oh, speaking of that, I was just watching a newer show on the Travel Channel. It's about like, um, you know, the viral videos that go out um, about the paranormal stuff. You were watching part of it with me. Um, and they had this this footage of this alleged Bigfoot in the mountains, which I'm watching it going, oh, right. oh my God, this is crazy. And then I'm watching it a little more. And then last week on the same channel... Mysteries at the Museum debunked that story and had the actual man who was running in the snow. It was not a Bigfoot. On the same channel. I thought that was really weird. Anywho, I do have a a story, a paranormal story that's like in the news. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, I like these. So a woman in Peru says that her life has been torn asunder. Coast to coast AM's word, not mine. Thanks to a possessed doll with a penchant for causing mischief. I thought you were going to say with a pension. And I was like, wow, I need to find this doll. (laughs) Nice. I need that doll. Um, So the woman whose name is Berliz, B-E-R-L-I-Z. Come on, Berliz. She resides in the Peruvian city of Calao, C-A-L-L-A-O. And the doll in question name is Daisy. Daisy was a Christmas gift from her mother. And she kind of put it up in her room next to her bed and, you know, just wanted to honor her mother's gift giving right, abilities maybe until the doll started losing its hair oh. out of nowhere oh 
And she kind of thought, well, maybe it was a defect of the doll. Maybe she didn't want to tell mom so she could return and get another one. So she kind of <laughs> wrapped saran wrap around the doll's head. I don't know if she was trying to promote hair growth or what was going on there. Or maybe just keep it all in there. Well, I, th- you're probably right. Maybe it just didn't lose all of its hair. Um, and so it, she had the doll where it was actually watching her when she where when she was asleep and the next morning she found she woke up to find the balding doll had moved and was now like all up in her face what while she slept yeah so that's when she decided that the doll's hair loss might be something more than just you know a default from the factory uh, maybe yeah um so these uh suspicions were kind of Amplified once Daisy the doll attacked Berliz's boyfriend. When did this happen? This is recent. This is recent. Oh, this is not an iPad. This is my computer. This was November last year. Um, so she attract she attacked her boyfriend. She the doll grabbed him and <gasps> hit him. Oh no! <laughs> so. I I don't I don't know if this is the the de- picture on this website is of the actual doll. I'm picturing like this little like, you know, those creepy dolls you see in all the antique yes, malls. Just kind of exactly like what I'm thinking. just hauling off and <laughs> punching this guy in the it's face. It's like a scene from one of the like, scary movies. <laughs> exactly, like kicking him and like her toe gets stuck up <laughs> his nose or something. Um, but he ended up breaking up with her because oh of the doll. Oh my gosh, damn doll! You know I. The guy didn't sound like a bad guy. No, this doll's a homewrecker. Why Why do you keep the fucking doll? <laughs> I mean, you just throw it in the trash can and you let the garbage men in the dump deal with it. Look at Alexa. Grandmother rescued from Ice Block. Maybe she was the Minnesota Ice Man. Maybe. Sorry, not to interrupt. That was way too No, ironic. that's fine. <laughs> um... So let's see. So since that, the doll has continued to torment this woman. She still has it? She still has well, it. That's her own fault. I'm going to agree. Or maybe she's just looking for a little attention, as people do. She's crazy. That. Peruvians. Is probably the case. But I thought that was funny. And, and it's I'm hilarious. I'm just picturing this little doll, like, hauling off and punching this okay, let's say this. Head. Let's say this did happen. Yeah. How do you even go to the news with that? I don't know. I do you do you be you sitting around, you know, getting your nails did, telling your girlfriends about it? they go, Well, my cousin works at W C B Q T F L. That's exactly yes. Yeah. So you guys, DJ Jimmy and Clayton saw that we won the kinda nerdy podcast award. We did. Woo! We're now award winning. It was, you know, I, I kind of pimped it out on all the socials. <laughs> so all of our friends and listeners and everybody voted for us. Doesn't make us the best, but our fans and our friends are the best. That's, <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> so thanks, KJ, Katie, and Jana for uh, nominating us for the award. We're pretty stoked about that. Also, um, I know I told you, but I don't know if I told Jimmy or not. DJ Jimmy, wah, wah, that we're going to meet up with a, a couple podcasters in the UK that have a podcast similar to ours. It's called yes. Not for the Dinner Table. That's so great. I cannot wait. I think that's going to be a blast. I think it will be. I don't think we're going to do like podcasting or anything, but just know. to sit down with people just like us right? and drink and eat all the wonderful British food. I'm a fan. Uh, I can't wait. But that's that's all I had on my my laundry list of things to not forget that I almost forgot and really did forget. It's okay. We've so far surpassed our allotted banter time. Well, he, <laughs> Jimmy likes to start recording a little early. That is true. Yeah. So Who you got to take like eight ish minutes and account for that. <laughs> I'm just making numbers up because math is hard. So who goes first? Clayton. Okay, so mine is a little different. It's not like, hold on, I have to yawn. <laughs> we have not been on our game the last couple I episodes. I know. It's because we're I like getting comfortable. Once. Now we're not like, you know. I know, exactly. No, but it's not. So it's a haunting. 
but it's more so how it became haunted. Ooh, and then like those some are ex- my favorite. Some experiences actually. too. There was my burp. <laughs> <clears throat> so, the Iroquois Theater in Chicago. Heard all the theaters are all haunted. They're great. Please tell me about this one. So the Iroquois Theater, designed by Benjamin Marshall in a, re- in a Renaissance style, was highly luxurious and had been deemed fireproof upon its opening in 1903. Okay. Around the exact same time that the, the Titanic was coined unsinkable. unsinkable. Yeah. Fireproof had a whole different meaning back then. Yeah. So, in fact, George Williams, Chicago's building commissioner... And the fire inspector, Ed Laughlin, looked over the theater in November and declared that it was fireproof beyond all doubt. Ha- they noted Wait. that there were 30 exits, 27 of which were double doors. Um, so, yeah, that's, you know. Unless it's made of brick, it's not fireproof. Go on. So, at the same time, um, the, some guy who was an editor of a fireproof magazine, which must have been a thing in 1903... Talk about some interesting reading right, right. there. <laughs> um, he also inspected it and wrote this novel of an editorial about the amount of fire dangers that are in this theater, including the great deal of wood trim, no fire alarms, and no sprinkler system over the stage. But Did why they would they need those things if they thought, thought it was fire? Right. Mm. Because well, this, guy, like this he guy, probably though. yeah, he probably got word that it was, you know, Unsinkable. beyond all doubt. Yeah. And he's like... Mm. Let's go check this out. So during the matinee performance of um, Bluebeard, of Mr. Bluebeard, sorry, on December 30th. Have you seen that one? I've not. Me neither. (laughs) Uh, But it was was a full house. And what was crazy is that like this show had some ticket sales issues. And so this was one of their first sold out crowds. But a lot of, um, a lot of like kids were out of school. um, And so... This place was, it had a 1,600 seat house. Okay. And there were over 2,000 people in the theater because they had a lot of standing room. Those damn Groupons. And, <laughs> and so because it was so full, people that didn't have tickets were still trying to come in. Oh, And keep shit. in mind, like, it's 1903. They're not, like, sitting here scanning. Like, right. Paint, like, <laughs> Beep. So, yeah, like, so what do you do? So they barred 27 of the 30 doors. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Something's going to go wrong. Because around. they couldn't get these people to stop coming, to in. Stop coming in. So they oh. barred them. So the stage manager, who like supposed to be like managing the stage, right. goes out for a drink. Wait, what? I'm not kidding. So it was a spotlight operator who first noticed that one of the calcium lights seemed to have sparked like a small fire backstage. Oh, <laughs> Right. So the area was like really, really cluttered of Of course like it was. Wooden props and oily rags and it was literally like Your worst case scenario. Full of oil paint, probably. So when the actors realized that there was a fire, they like of course run backstage. So the the um what should we call it? The stage manager, <laughs> he shows back up and he's trying to calm down the audience. I'm like, you know, it's totally fine. They had an asbestos curtain, which like supposed to come down <laughs> to like, you know, stop sure. uh, contain a fire next to the lead paint. <laughs> but it, again, it's nineteen oh three. It's supposed to come down to like you know, stop fire, but it wouldn't come all the way down. Of course. And so, like, panic just everyone in the theater ensued. It was later brought to light that the asbestos curtain was made of paper. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Who is this fire chief? I thought this article was fake. But it's just... <laughs> Understandably this, so. They just had it coming. So <clears throat> then, because of this massive fire that's going on now, all the lights go out in the place. So you have a theater with two, over 2,000 people in it. This is my worst fucking nightmare happening at this place. A theater with over 2,000 people in it, locked doors, and I guess was a, there was a fire they could still see, but... Well, it depends on how big right. the fire had gotten. Did it hit the paper curtain yet? Uh, no, it never came all the way down, so it doesn't really matter. Well, yeah. Um, so they finally get a door open backstage, and when it was opened, again, it's December in Chicago, so 
a huge rush of like cold air comes in and wind and a fireball just roars through like the oh, whole backstage because it just like fueled the hell out yeah. of it. So the ushers were all teenagers and they like flood me. I know this is going to turn tragic at some point and I'm trying to stop being and, snarky. I know me too. <laughs> but so they got scared and they left. Oh my God. Not unlocking all those doors. Oh shit. Right. I mean, that was like their job. So the doors were finally able to open and they were about four feet above the sidewalk for some reason, which obviously slowed down the process of people getting out. Yeah. So I've read multiple things. Some say like 591, some say like 600, um, 605. It was one of those two, but it wasn't consistent. People ended up dying. Shit. Um, Most of which were seated in the balcony because there were no fire escapes no ladders, oh. anything to help them get down. So they were quite literally trapped because, again, they had locked all these doors. But some people, like, took their chance was, like, jumping from the balconies. And, oh. I mean, of course. Yeah. Um, and bodies were piled six deep near the narrow balcony exits. Oh, my like, God. Like, after they contained the fire and finally got in, to, like, to find everything. Um, some people were knocked down fleeing by bodies, like, Oh, yeah. Like coming down. Um, In the aftermath of the disaster, Williams was later charged and convicted of misfeasance, um, which I had to Google. Okay, because I have no clue what it is. Um, It's essentially just like he didn't know what he was talking about. Oh, Um, of course. So Chicago's mayor was also indicted, though the charges didn't stick. The theater owner was convicted of manslaughter due to poor safety provisions. Thank fucking God. The conviction was later appealed and reversed. Well, the only Chicago person, shit. the only person to serve any jail time for this, was a nearby saloon owner who robbed the dead bodies. Oh my! I'm not laughing. While his I'm establishment served as a makeshift morgue. Oh my God. Yeah, I wish I was kidding. Um, that fucker should fry. <clears throat> yeah. But isn't that like crazy that yeah. that's the only person that did jail time for this? Yeah. Insane. So the building was demolished in the 20s and rebuilt as the Oriental Theater, um, which retains the same facade. Um, it's right downtown, like on um, Randolph Street. And still to this day, it's a really popular destination for ghost hunters because behind it is so the alleyway. Mm-hmm. Again, they had 600 bodies. I cannot even And they imagine. just like stacked them in this alleyway behind the theater while they were trying to clear everybody out, see if there were any survivors. Right. And it's now called or known as Death Alley to a lot of like local um, paranormal investigators. Um, and it actually made a newspaper headline shortly after saying it was or dubbing it the Alley of Death and Mutilation. Oh, wow. Um, but can you imagine just like the. One, theaters, we know the energy they have. Yes. Two, something like that. All the, just. (sighs) Right. And so it says, um, this is also so messed up, that when all these bodies were laying there, like all these people started coming in and like trying to like check them for money and jewelry. And 1903 was wasn't just the saloon Terrible. No, he just did it because they thought we could put bodies in here. So this doesn't happen. Uh, whatever who what offer up mess. their saloon but you know what leave them here yeah but anyways um terrible these dead bodies like getting robbed um but apparitions have been seen in the alley behind the theater where the bodies were stacked um snl alum uh anna gastire gastire sorry okay. anna if you're listening um she claims that she had an experience at the theater while because she, she was in wicked for a little while uh-huh and said that um, she was, like, touched and, and would see things all the time. Oh, wow. And many staff members of the Oriental Theater claimed to hear cries um, in the shadows of, like, when they're opening up and stuff like that. And refused to go up to the balcony at all because the amount of cold spots and shadow figures oh. that they've seen up in the balcony. I have goosebumps. Yeah. It's so totally. crazy. And it's – they obviously don't allow investigating – um, yeah, I mean, it's still it's now like a very successful operating theater, but I had no idea. Like I've no. I've been to that theater, but um, yeah, it so that there wasn't really anything 
of like hard evidence from people that have gone in and investigated. Right, because they don't. Right. But I it mean, has to be haunted. Though. That alleyway behind, I read so many people's interviews that were just like, the amount of dread you feel back there is oh. overwhelming. Yeah, I can't even imagine. And there are a lot of um, like artist renditions that were in the papers back then mm-hmm. of people like fleeing, and it's terrifying. Like, because they didn't have real photos. Right, um, right. But it's it. I, I, it's almost like, you know, much, much smaller scale of everything we saw on the news for 9-11. I mean, right. nobody could get out. People were doing what they could to get out. That's right. what I kept envisioning yeah, yeah. as you were telling the story. But like I said, they kind of, like all jokes aside, asked for it. No, they really did. And it, it, yes, it was a very, like, unfortunate situation that the fire happened at that particular performance. Of course. Where it was overflowing with people and they had to lock people out. Um, but I'm like, those ushers should have gotten in some sort of trouble. Yeah. There's so many people that should have gotten in a lot of trouble. Yeah. 600. I had no idea. That's awful. Yeah. Now I feel bad for being such a smart ass at the beginning of your story. I mean, you knew it was going to get bad. I, well, I started thinking about that. I'm like, oh, I should probably shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it... Like I said, it's a very different story, but it was just something I had no idea that happened. No. And like, how often do we go to Chicago? All the time. We need to go to the alley. Yeah, we do. It's it's an alley. What are they going to say? Yeah, just stand there for 10 minutes and just get all the yeah, vibes. bring the Wonder Box. Oh, could you imagine? All the children that were in there. Yeah, I know. Oh, I don't like it. Okay. Now I feel, have all the guilt for all the bad jokes. <laughs> that was a good story, though. Yeah. I liked it. I have a different kind of take on things as well. Ooh, and and I've, I've written it up differently, us. too. I know. I was talking to DJ Jimmy this weekend. I'm like, I, I hate that I sound like I'm reading my stories when I tell my stories. So I've tried bullet points. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> this is, um, it's just in general, because, you know, of all the traveling we do, it's just haunted airports all over Whoa. the world. Yeah. We're going to start with Heathrow. Since we're heading to London here in a few weeks, of course. Why not? Um, Heathrow Airport is in London, and it's a place we visit a couple times a year. Uh, And the main ghost there is Dick Turpin. And he's actually been haunting the land since before the actual airport was built. He was kind of like the... uh, the Robin Hood of the 1730s. Oh. Um, he kind of was known for robbing and stealing. Well, maybe not Robin Hood. There was some murder in there as well. Oh, my. <laughs> um, before it finally caught up to him in 1739. And he was a very ar- arrogant fellow. And when they put him up on the gallows to actually hang him, he just jumped off. Oh. He said, fuck it. Let's just do this. Get it over oh with. Oh, my gosh. Jumped off. And he kind of became a legend of sorts in the area. Right. And was Is there a, focus... a movie about him? There has to be. There ha- well, it's, it's, Sorry. It's, no, <laughs> please interrupt me anytime you want. I do it to you all the time. Um, he was the focus of many English ballads and theater shows. So if there were plays about oh, it, there might there be has movies. To be a movie. Yeah. Um, people usually see, hear, and feel him behind them when Ooh. they're working at the airport. And um, they'll kind of just feel like this presence walk up on them. And then they turn around and there's nothing there. Um, and then there's also the businessman of the runway. Are you, are you done with Dick? Are you, yes. Oh, how do they know it's him? They just assume it's him. Oh, okay, sorry. I don't know. I didn't get that far into it. <laughs> there were so many stories. I was like, bullet point, bullet point, <laughs> bullet point. Um, so the next ghost at Heathrow is the businessman of the runway. Um, this one ghost was the victim of a 1948 crash of a DC three Dakota. I put that in there just for you. you. I don't know what that is. Um, there was a crash. There were no survivors of the crash and the rescue to rescue crew continued to pull victims out of the crash while working. They noticed a gentleman appear out of the fog and he asked them if they had seen his, his briefcase. Before they could answer, he faded away before their eyes. Oh, uh, well, have they seen his briefcase? Eh, I don't think so. The rescue workers found that exact man among the dead later that night. What? Yes. Kind of cool. Very cool. Um, although this crash occurred, occurred over 50 years ago, the man still haunts the runway. In 1970, police investigator Leslie Alton 
received a report that the radar had detected someone on the runway. So like a human? Like a human. Wow. So they sent out fire engines, cars, everybody to go out and get this person off the runway. Um, and they're driving around. They're like, we don't see him. We don't see him. And finally, the radar officer tells them, well, either you just ran over them <gasps> because he's now behind you or he's not there. Crazy. Whoa. The search was eventually called off. And they still wonder to this day if it was the businessman still looking for his briefcase. Makes sense. Yeah. Poor guy. I know. And then there was, and Heathrow's got the most, so I figured I'd start big. Um, there's a, it's the VIP that won't go away. Apparently there's a. <laughs> Same. A, yeah, there's a businessman who hangs out in the VIP lounge in Heathrow. Okay. That people see him appear and disappear before their eyes. Like, sir, it was he a wore, day pass. Yeah, exactly. He wears a gray suit, and um, some only report seeing him from the waist down. Whoa. I thought that was interesting. So that's, that's you know, just a little snippet of what's going on at Heathrow. You know there's more. We've had this discussion before. I know. We, with all the places we go, there's got to be spirits. It has that, to be. It has to be. So, Everywhere. Yeah. Well, and... There's just so many people around us at all points of time. We wouldn't even know. I know. So there's the Denver airport. Oh, I can't wait. It was built on a sacred Native American burial ground. Oh, my gosh. Didn't know that. That doesn't help their cause about any of their other. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Duh. (laughs) Um, So there are actually also a load of conspiracy theories. A load. A load. And I, I, I... did highlight one because I was like, okay, this is just too good to pass up. One of the conspiracy theories are that there is a lizard people <laughs> actually <laughs> live under the airport in a huge underground city and feast on small children. That... I was afraid to look into it because it would have been a rabbit hole. My, can I say my favorite conspiracy about that? Yes, please. Is that like below it is a doomsday shelter for like the highest of like high end people, and that like Beyonce and Jay Z have like a spot there. And oh, kind of like that American Horror Story apocalypse. Literally, just like it. Hmm. I think Beyonce and Jay Z were on that list for American Horror Story as well. <laughs> Coming for you, Ryan Murphy. <laughs> um. So with the hauntings. Uh, Many employees that work at the airport claim to have an uneasy feeling, the feeling that someone's watching them when no one is around. And this is, again, with the conspiracy theories, maybe curse, maybe Native American burial ground. There's a 32-foot Bronco statue on the property Yes, with glowing red eyes. Glowing red eyes. That it's been lovingly called Blucifer, which is amazing. But... There was all kinds of setbacks when the artist was sculpting. And at one point, he fell and he died. And his family had to finish it. Literally died. Yeah. We, (laughs) the only reason I know that is because we went to Denver a couple months ago to visit our friend Annie. And she was telling us about this thing. Lucifer. Yes. And she was like, the guy legit died. No, he like fell off and died. And his his like mom and dad had to come in. They said family. I'm I'm picturing you know like old mom and dad up there, trying to finish this thing. This is a really good one. Um, Bangalore Airport in India. Ooh. The airport has two resident haunters. One is a lady in white. Always. Which apparently that's you know just worldwide. It's not just you know in Victorian <laughs> homes in the U.S. Oh gosh. Um, she's spotted all over the property, but whenever she, someone tries to appro- approach her, she disappears into thin air. Convenient. And not nearly as many people have also spotted a headless apparition that disappears upon approach. Okay, that's kind of scary. Yeah. Like, that's scary. Yeah, unless it's like headless Nick from Harry Potter. I could do with that. I like that guy. I don't know. No, nearly headless Nick. My my bad. <laughs> Honolulu Airport is haunted. Oh. Apparently, this lady in white makes the rounds because she's oh, there too. Oh, gosh. <laughs> or she just has a twin hanging out at the Honolulu Airport. Um, this one has a little more story to it. This tropical lady in white is supposedly waiting for a man who promised to marry her. Oh. 
But this coward left on an international flight never to return. She's seen lovingly looking out at the runway, waiting, I guess, for That's eternity. So sad. I know. But, I mean, lady, you're in Hawaii. Get over it. I know. Go get some sun, girl. You won't be so white. Um, there's also reports. <laughs> it did say the white lady. I'm yeah, assuming she's wearing white. Like lady in white, not like the white ass woman. <laughs> Maybe. You don't know. <laughs> Have you seen her? No. <laughs> um, there are also reports of poltergeists hanging out at this airport. Oh. Of, in all places, the bathroom. So the reports there of a spirit who unrolls the toilet paper, slams toilet seats, and flushes toilets randomly throughout the day and night. Moaning Myrtle. I'm assuming it's like, you know, a uh, uh, spirit of a custodian. Oh, I was really hoping it was Moaning Myrtle. And we were just really going for this Harry Potter thing. Yeah, I should have totally gone that route, too. <laughs> Sorry. Totally screwed that up. And then uh, the third ghost of the Honolulu, Air, Honolulu Airport hangs out in a terminal shuttle. And this spirit is said to sit on travelers' chests. I'm going with the chili dog they got before they got on the um, shuttle. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That, that one was weird. Because it didn't really explain if they like actually saw a ghost sitting on the chest but I've been on several airport shuttles and you stand. So I, I couldn't quite figure that one out. I left that in there for, you know, my comedic timing. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> so next up we have the Duluth International Airport. Visitors to this airport claim there's a female murder victim that haunts the terminals. Whoa. Legend has it that she haunts the airport, setting off security alarms, opening and closing doors, looking for her murderer since this is where he went to escape after her killing. That's cool. That's it's very like interesting. That. Yeah. And and makes sense and but those alarms go off at all the airports, so maybe Always. she's looking at all the airports for him. Chandler Airport in Arizona claims that this airport port are a man coming out of a wall near a ticket counter. Just, you know, that's need, the word I'm looking I need for. Proof. I need videos. I know. This day and age. Um, also, a man watching non-existent planes taking off out of an abandoned control tower where nobody's supposed to be, just a dude hanging out. Um, there are people seen walking through the terminal when it is supposedly empty. And wait staff at a restaurant in the airport claim to hear disembodied voices and see the dishes rattle. Oh, my gosh. Not the best of all the haunted airports, but it's this. Still this haunted. That's my third burp. Tracy, because I know you're keeping count. Um, so the next two are badass. So I'm not going to pronounce this right. It's an airport in Bangkok, Thailand. The Suvarnabhumi Airport. That's exactly how you say it. Um, this is, an, again, another airport built over a burial ground. Duh. Um, but this burial ground was already haunted by cursed spirits. While under construction... The workers reported seeing angry spirits watching them build and would hear them chanting, whispering, and sometimes screaming. What? Mm -hmm. Freak accidents started happening during construction to the workers, and several of these accidents were fatal. So more hauntings on top of the cursed burial ground. Officials brought 99 Buddhist monks in to perform rituals what? on the land. In order to appease the spirits and exercise them from the area. When the airport finally did open in 2005 is when they knew these rituals didn't work. Several deadly traffic accidents happened on the property. Um, ever since its opening, the ghosts spotting have been constant. The place is crawling with ghosts is, is exactly what the article said. This place is crawling with ghosts, including a spirit known as Poo Ming. I had to put his name in there because his name's Pooh. Um, <laughs> who walks around with a stick and a blue painted face. So, you know, he's probably from the burial ground. Another often reported spirit is that of a mother walking around holding a baby. This is when it gets weird. She often appears in front of speeding cars <gasps> only to vanish before impact. And these cars get in the part of the deadly accidents. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> 
Um, the sp- the, this same spirit is blamed for causing an airplane to skid off the runway in 2006. It was going down the runway and they see this woman carrying a baby on the runway and plane's like, well, we hit her or we skid off the side and they choose option two. The hauntings have become so widely known in Thailand. I put the name of the airport in there. I'm not going to try. Um, it has no less than eight shrines on its premises at this Whoa. point. Whoa. Which were erected in order to protect the area and ward off the spirits. The shrines began being built when a security expert searching for explosives allegedly went into a trance, claimed to be possessed by a spirit, which commanded that the shrines be built. What? Jeez. I know. Some serious shit. Which, and I know you said you were going to try it, but which airport is it? It's in Bangkok, Thailand. It's just one of the... Suvranamaha. Cool. That's good. I'll text it to you later. Yeah. And then last but not least, we're back in Chicago. Oh. Look at the good we do. O'Hare Airport, which we spend a lot of time in. Most of the hauntings in and around O'Hare stem from one of the worst aviation disasters in history, which struck on May 25th, 1979. And I vaguely remember that. 70s were a terrible time for the airlines. Oh, awful. Yeah. Awful. I can't believe we're still flying. Um, when American Airlines flight 191 crashed for apparently no good reason, the flight had a very experienced pilot in the DC-10. You probably knew that already. Um, he was, <laughs> and it was one of the most reliable aircrafts of its time. The plane approached 6,000 feet and one of the engines completely separated from the aircraft, causing the plane to crash, killing all 258 passengers and 18 crew members. Whoa. And I was nine at the time. And I, I, I should have looked up like the news footage and I've been like, oh, shit, I remember that. Right. Um, it wasn't long after the tragedy that some strange stories started to emerge. Some of them were actually at the crash site. The crash site, people would call the police saying that they see lights in the field, hear moaning and screaming. And when the police would arrive, there was nothing there. No lights, no sounds, no people. Um, claims made at around the time of the crash by those who lived in a trailer park next to the field. The residents claim that within hours of the crash, they heard strange knocking sounds on their doors, windows. What? And when these sounds were investigated, it turned out no one was there. This bizarre phenomenon... Let's rewind. (laughs) The bizarre phenomenon gradually intensified in the following weeks. I fucked up the word gradually. (laughs) Take three. (laughs) This bizarre phenomenon gradually intensified (laughs) in the following weeks with reports that doorknobs were being turned and shaken and objects moved and that there were frequent sounds of disembodied footsteps on porches and stairways. These poor lost souls were trying to get on a phone and call 911 in this trailer park. (laughs) Can you imagine how terrified those people had to be to live there? So back at the airport, right after the crash, there were many reports of passengers claiming their luggage was lost and then vanished into thin air. Another common sighting was customers running through the airport claiming they were going to miss their flight and then continue running into thin air. It is said that on occasion, a young man wearing a slightly out-of-date business... No wearing slightly out-of-date business clothes, can be seen using a payphone near the gate from which Flight 191 departed. When the man finishes his call, he then allegedly takes a few steps and just vanishes. That's terrifying. I know. I need to find out what terminal that was. I know. Maybe we should, like, act like we missed our flight. Like, gosh, we have to sleep here tonight. (laughs) Where where did (laughs) Flight 191 in 1979 leave? But I guess there's so many eerie photographs and disembodied voices that have been captured in this terminal. Um, You can now take ghost tours through this terminal. What? Yeah. I didn't like research how to or who does it or anything like that. But that would be really cool. That would be so cool. Because we're in Rosemont all the freaking time. All the time. Yeah. We'll be there in what? A month and a half? Yeah. But who knew so many freaking... And this is just, I'm sure, the tip of the iceberg. Absolutely. You know people have had experiences everywhere. Oh, yeah. 
And well, that one and in it, Thailand, though, dumbasses building on the cursed burial ground. Well, I mean, look at Denver. Did you know Lucifer. that Denver? So it took them like a really, really long time to even open that airport because they wanted to call it the Denver, Air, like Denver International Airport, but uh-huh. it wasn't in Denver. Because you know, have yeah, you flown like it's not. It's like O'Hare's outside and the Rosemont, city. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so they literally. We're going back and forth with the city and finally got the city to like redo their like oh, shit. zoning. So there is some just asshole involved with that airport. Some weird shit. Sounds but like yeah. it. Crazy. Nuts. Yeah, there, there was that. I'm going to have to look into more of the, those conspiracy theories at Denver though. Like, oh my gosh. I saw one thing that was like an overlook of map of the yes. airport. It's shaped like a swastika. Yep. Um, You need to, and before paintings. you just like go digging through your computer because it will be eight hours and you won't know where your day went. It's a rabbit hole. There's one I saw on like Discovery or uh, no, it might have been on Netflix. There's a really, really good one that like goes in like great detail and it's like an hour long. Oh, I could do that. Yeah. So you don't waste your whole day. Yeah, that sounds good. But like it's just some creepy paintings in the actual airport. So yeah, we actually walked around and we didn't like look for them. But I guess they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Yeah. And there's like this sculpture where this um uh there's this um sculpture with railroad tracks that just like fall off of it. Weird. Yeah, it's all very weird. I I I want to delve into the rabbit hole of these lizard people in, in their oh lizard gosh. community that eat small children. But why? Because I'm thinking that's a stretch. I'm just putting that out there. If you are a lizard person listening, please email me at oddityfilescrew at gmail.com. I'd love to talk more. So anything spooky going on with you? Still no heat in your house? Yes, which we decided our house is just crazy haunted. Yeah, it's just, it's cold, just cold spots. spots. That makes all the sense. It does. And they, they don't like upstairs. Do you want to take the spirit box home with you? No. Okay, didn't think so. Got shit attached to that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> this point that might as well be an airport well this weekend while we were at the arnold Mm -hmm. carter texted me telling me that his dog thinks my house is haunted yep my husband's library the dog would go in and start growling and barking at nothing so i smudged hardcore smudged the place today with black sage fuck that white sage i'm going black sage and i mean for carter to text you about something oh i know I feel like it has to be significant. That'd be like me texting you about something. Right. And he said, after he walked into the room, after his dog was, you know, freaking out in there, he said he got all goosebumpy right. and everything. So, I well, don't know. And, like, so Carter's dog, Mason, is so calm and so, like... The sweetest puppy you'll So, for him to be, like, growling at things? Yeah. Unless it was my dog, which she can't stand, but it, Carter would have let me know that. Right. Nuts. Um, today, which is a little earlier than this podcast came out, I found out that the episode of Beyond the Darkness that I did on the cruise right. with Dave and Nikki is up on iTunes. Oh, very cool. So check it out. Plug it's away. Fun, fun stuff. It's uh, Beyond the Darkness. Check it out. Tell Dave you found him through me. You know, so... You made the comment about the woman popping up in the middle of the roads. That's like a legit fear of mine. Oh, I. That like I'm going to be driving and then like top a hill and there's going to be like a person standing there. Oh, yeah. That's a legit fear. Mine is my. I'm more worried about deer living where I well, live. That's just but, a realistic fear. Well, well, they both are because people are stupid. Well, no, the other day and it wasn't the other day. It was literally months ago, but whatever. Um, I was driving behind you guys. We were going to get food and we topped the hill and there's just goats. In the uh-huh. middle of the road. Yeah, that's where I live. I was like, get the out of here. The middle of nowhere, Indiana. Indiana. I'm a hick chick. Where it's cold as shit and we bitch about it, but cold we could move if we shit. wanted. But again, I do want to remind all of you listening. Well, first of all, I want to tell you all thank you for listening. Yes, thank you so much. Because you're also freaking awesome. And all the shares and retweets and everything you guys do on social means the world to us. We really, truly appreciate that. Drive to Cincinnati, and at 6 o'clock, we're going to be doing our very first live podcast at Horror Hound Weekend. I can't wait. I know. And it's funny. So, like, 
Kitsy said, we also do photo ops. So we are doing said photo ops at that event, and the podcast is in the middle of them. I know. So like, we tried really uh, hard to make it work, <laughs> so we're but we're not gonna, missing this opportunity. <laughs> we're just going to go and do this thing. We'll be back. <laughs> We're just going to bring in some volunteers, but so you might not want to no. eh, just stop and talking right now. Anyhow, on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. get your photo off on Saturday, on Saturday, but there's a great guest list there. So yeah. if you can't, if you can get to Cincinnati this weekend, head on out. It's actually Sharonville, Sharonville. Ohio. Great guest. Their freaking meatloaf is there. I'm still excited. It's he there Friday? A huge Adams Family reunion. Oh, which is um, like the biggest one I've ever seen. Yeah, it's super cool. But like she said, if you have your stories, oddityfilescrew at gmail.com. Yep. Um, we have merch. Go check out our merch. Just go to our website and you can find it there. Yep. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, like I think I mentioned it last week. We really enjoy interacting with you guys. So um, much. So kind of even if you have a question about something paranormal that you're experiencing, don't expect us to fix it, but like we'll give you our two cents. Yeah. Or if you have questions about us. Yeah. If I don't like the question, I won't answer it. I'll make Clayton answer it instead. But right. no, seriously, though, send us all the stuff, all the things. We, we love hearing from you guys. It's, it's, that's one of the best parts about doing this. Yeah. Other than we get to hang out and just tell creepy stories is – is getting to know you guys a little bit. And a little secret insight. Um, we've actually, we have our next couple uh, celebrity stories lined up. So Thank God. I had all the guilt from that hangover <laughs> on the cruise when we were supposed to do um, celebrity So recordings. yeah, just be on the lookout for those. We have some exciting guests that have, that are wanting to tell their paranormal stories. Yes. Yay. So. We know some cool people and I can't wait for you guys to hear all about it. Again, subscribe, review, rate, tell your friends, tell your grandma, tell your boss to listen. Don't tell that weird guy in three cubicles down, though, because I, I really don't want to deal with him. But thanks for listening, guys. Weird's the new cool since she forgot. You are the weakest link. <laughs>